After talking about dinosaurs, let's talk about the fate they all met with, death. That's what our next story is about. Slightly more rose for a Friday, I know. But it's a grave affair worth talking about. Philosophers have long pondered it. So have physicians. Ancient civilizations were obsessed with death. How did they perceive death? Ancient Egyptians believed dying was the most significant thing one could do in their life. But in Mesopotamia, they called death a wage of sin. For them, death was dark stuff. What about the ancient Chinese? They believed death was a prolongation of life. If I were to explain it to Gen Z, kind of like how Facebook accounts live forever. Well, wait, Facebook is ancient too. I mean Instagram, that's the app definition of modern. Speaking of which, how would the modern world define death? In today's day and age, death often means a forever life in the digital realm. Our videos float on the internet, whether or not we walk the earth. Our angry comments on YouTube exist forever, whether or not we like them. Death imitates life. So it only makes sense that now death itself is going digital. Many people in China would agree. You see, they're now resting in tech. Once people die, their ashes are stored in a compartment of a large room, kind of like inside a safe of a bank. All the walls are covered with electronic screens, which display pictures of the deceased or the things they love. It sounds absurd, but people say it personalizes cremation. But that isn't the main goal behind this. The real aim is twofold. One is to save land, which would otherwise be used for burials. Beijing wants to reduce the land occupied by cemeteries by 70% till 2035. So the government is all for digital burials. The second aim is to make the process more affordable. Now, China leads the world in funeral service demand in 2020. Its market was worth $35 billion. It is predicted to reach $56 billion by 2026. What can we say? Death is a real money maker. It is taking a toll on people's pockets. An average funeral in China costs about 45% of a person's annual salary. The global average is 10%. People even take a graveyard loan to fund funerals. So digital cemeteries are unconventional, even bizarre, but they are affordable. Just this year, at least 500 such digital plots have been sold in China. In fact, people across the world seem to be interested in them because funerals are not expensive just in China. In Japan, they cost more than 68% of an average person's annual salary, 68%. In Germany, 16%. In South Africa, 13%. In the UK and the US, about 12%. Sure, they're not expensive everywhere. In India, for instance, they cost only 2% of a person's average annual salary. In Russia, 1%. So digital funerals may not make sense in all countries, but in some, they have birthed the industry for death. So-called death startups are dying to get into the business. No, their employees do not go around murdering people. The world have, it has enough freelancers doing that. These startups operate in the arena of death. Some services hold online memorials for the deceased. Others curate an online mausoleum, basically a digital twin of physical burials, where clients can get buried on virtual islands of their choice, even choose its weather conditions, perhaps. Basically, if you, have, if you live in a hot city but hate it, maybe in death you can enjoy a cool breeze and sip pumpkin latte. Other startups are also creating AI replicas of the dead, which mimic a person's voice and likeness and help someone live forever in digital form. But dead startups are not just for the afterlife. A UK-based startup helps people with insurance and digital legal documents to ease the post-death paperwork. At least in death, one should get respite from that paperwork. Another startup helps people write their will. A Netherlands-based startup offers another kind of service. It helps cancel subscriptions and accounts of a deceased person. Now I understand how all of this must sound. On the one hand, these services sound helpful. If that's a stretch, maybe remotely interesting. But for most people, these startups seem to be mocking death. After all, death can be a traumatic experience for most, not just for the deceased, but also for their families. It is traumatic, it is emotionally taxing. And the cyber death industry knows this. It battles this challenge regularly, 
But here's the thing. Trends say that the younger generation cares more about practicality than customs. Many don't care about being one with the soil after death or about the feng shui of their burial ground. To them, digital death eases the pain of mixing grief with paperwork. It helps them talk to a loved one they have lost. It stops them from spending a bomb on funerals. Perceptions around death are changing. And in this, we are offered a reminder. No matter the definition of death, it varies across cultures and changes with time. At the end of the day, the end of anyone's life is simply defined by how they view it. So what appears dystopian today could be the future of death, even if that means a picture of BTS or Shah Rukh Khan on a burial collage. Digital death is strange, but it could help lift your spirits.